I didn't set out to do interdisciplinary work. Um, my first two degrees were in English, and it was only during my PhD um, in which a thesis about English literature somehow turned into a thesis about French philosophy. Um, that doubts about my disciplinary affiliation began to arise. Even at that stage, when I was basically writing a philosophy PhD, I still thought of myself as being in English, um, but as a literary theorist, which I thought sounded a lot sexier than being a Victorianist or a Romanticist or something else like that. Now, during my PhD, I spent a lot of time with these like-minded literary theorists. So it came as a bit of a shock when, at the end of their PhDs, they all came out as Victorianists or Modernists or Romanticists, people who just been dabbling with theory part-time. When I came to look at the academic job advertisements, Victorianists, Modernists, Romanticists, yes. Literary theorists, no. It seemed like these part-time theorists had been a lot more strategic than I had been. So I began to think a bit more carefully about the discipline of English, this discipline which had trained me, but which didn't really seem to want to employ me. I thought about other disciplines. How about philosophy? Well, perhaps. I'd been reading and practicing philosophy for some time at that point, but I knew from some of the hostility that I had experienced at philosophy conferences that I would always be on the peripheries of, of the discipline of philosophy, especially as a so-called continental philosopher. I decided to be even more strategic, uh, so my PhD was co-supervised by, by a philosopher and by someone from English. And so I looked to broaden my disciplinary spread even further. I picked my, um, my thesis examiners, a theologian and um, a comparative literature specialist. Now, because of this spread, I entered my viva in complete terror. I didn't know what they were going to ask me. But I left feeling triumphant, um, because one of the things that they had both said was that my work was richer by having this interdisciplinary perspective. I was excited at this point. Now, it seemed that this excitement was somewhat premature. Over the following two years, I applied for dozens of jobs across all of these different disciplines, and I didn't get any of them. I watched with rather mixed feelings as my friends, the Romanticist, the Modernist, the Victorianist, all got jobs. Now we all know that the, the academic job market is unpleasant, um, but it really is even more difficult for those of you doing interdisciplinary work. Now when I started looking for jobs, I really believed that uh, my interdisciplinarity would mean that there were more jobs for which I was equipped to apply. Now, I learned very quickly that it also meant that I had a lower chance of getting any of them. The word interdisciplinar interdisciplinarity often raises fear in the minds of conservative job appointment committees. So for the purposes of job applications, I became two different people. If I wanted to apply for jobs in philosophy and jobs in English, I felt like I needed to have fully fledged CVs in both of them. An interdisciplinary CV which could be adapted for either just didn't seem to cut it. My interdisciplinarity was really not the selling point that I'd naively hoped it would be. Now this meant, in short, more work. I needed to have broad teaching competence and a good publication record for both disciplines. Now I continue to submit articles to journals in both literary studies and philosophy, and the responses are always the same. When I submit things to philosophy journals, they always tell me to cut out the literature. And when I submit to literary journals, they always tell me to cut out the philosophy. Um, sometimes it makes me laugh, sometimes it really doesn't. Um, so for me, the story ends fairly well, or the present is, is, is fairly good for me. Eventually, I was offered, um, and I accepted, a small philosophy fellowship at, at the LSE, and then a one-year lectureship in philosophy at Royal Holloway. So in, the, in that year, I found myself teaching all sorts of fun things that I'd never studied as an undergraduate. Um, it was a great experience. It was really enriching. Now, this September, I moved to a different department, also at Royal Holloway, um, in a post which hopefully is going to become permanent. So I'm now lecturing in comparative literature. So my first words in my job interview presentation for this post were, I am not a comparatist. Um, and for some reason, the, the panel seems to like that. Um, but as it turns out, I feel like I'm a good fit for comparative literature. 
because it's a discipline which welcomes approaches and methodologies from across a wide variety of disciplines, and whose identity isn't bound up with a sense of disciplinary purity that you can sometimes find in philosophy. From my PhD onwards, interdisciplinary work seemed so obvious and so natural to me. I wanted to use the techniques that I'd acquired in English, but I wanted to apply them to different, bigger problems, different questions. And I wanted to combine these techniques with other techniques that I found along the way. The disciplinary boundaries always seemed to be in the wrong places for me. And of course, I'd missed the heyday of theory when philosophy and literary studies were happier to be in conversation with each other. Sometimes my work felt out of time and without a home. Now, the one thing that made me really bullish about my interdisciplinary approach was the fact that so many great humanities thinkers, theorists, and scholars of the 20th and 21st century are really interdisciplinarians. Now, my PhD focused primarily on the work of Jacques Derrida. And if I think about his work, think about some of the, the scholars who influenced him, think of some of the philosophers, Nietzsche, Heidegger, they too are in some ways interdisciplinarians. Um, and the, the scholars who've been influenced by Derrida, most of them also interdisciplinarians. So earlier this year, I reviewed a collection of essays by Judith Butler. So in these essays, Butler's concerns are philosophical, political, religious, and historical. And their methodology is derived from both philosophy and from literary studies. Now for me, when I was reading and reviewing this, it was so obvious that the volume was richer because of this diversity. The problems she addressed are lived, embodied problems. And the rich bank of resources on which she drew to address these problems seem to illuminate something about the arbitrariness of the disciplinary boundaries that we draw. Now, it seems to me that we are giving our students and young scholars mixed signals. So much of the work I read and teach is interdisciplinary. So much of the most original, engaging work is interdisciplinary. And yet, if our students specialise in this work, or even use it as a model for their own writing, they will struggle to find jobs. There will be no natural disciplinary home for them. Now, we might fantasise about a post-disciplinary future, but it doesn't seem like such a future is in sight to us. Now, I was a bit concerned when I agreed to speak on this panel that my response might be very negative, um, conditioned as it is by the resistance I've experienced in my own work and, and job hunt. Um, some of my peers actually chose their PhD topics with the academic job market in mind. Now, I'm pleased in hindsight that I didn't do that, that I was brave or stupid enough to follow my interdisciplinary inclinations. So I just want to finish by, by naming some of the things that, that helped me shift from feeling completely helpless um, and that I didn't fit to making me feel like I was a bit more controlled. So the first was having some kind of strategy. So this is probably not what you want to hear if you're embarking on the PhD of your dreams. You don't want to be thinking about strategies. Um, and I don't want to discourage anyone from doing the PhD of their dreams. Um, but I guess you do have to keep in mind your disciplinary options. So this might involve maintaining some kind of link to the more orthodox elements of your home discipline um, whilst you're doing the fun, crazy, original stuff that you're doing. Or it might mean keeping one foot in two disciplines very clearly, so going to two sets of conferences, submitting papers to two or more sets of journals, schmoozing two totally different sets of people. So I do think having a sense of strategy helps. Um, the second point is help. Um, so obviously all PhD students need some kind of help. Uh, my experience was that academics are basically split between people who are mean and people who are nice. Um, and the key is obviously, well sometimes they're both, but that's, that's too tricky. Um, the key is to find the nice ones and to lean on them really hard. So don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. It was really small pieces of advice and encouragement that got me through my PhD. Um, and if the nice people also, also happen to be interdisciplinarians, then they can help you plot your strategy. Um, so, next thing, next point about publishing. So, I don't want to say much about this because I think Sarah's covered so much. But I would say don't waste your time um, submitting interdisciplinary work to journals which are hostile to interdisciplinary work in the hope that you think you'll win them over or you'll convince them. Um, you probably won't, and also you will really not enjoy reading the reader's reports when you get on that. 
Um, make peace with the feeling that you don't know enough. Uh, so obviously this is a, an issue for all academics. We never feel like we know enough. But I think it's a problem for interdisciplinarians in particular. Unless you're lucky enough to get the perfect job, you will probably end up teaching outside your specialism, outside your home discipline, doing all sorts of different things. You'll feel like you're spreading yourself too thinly. You might be writing articles about three different things, you might be teaching three other different topics, and you might be running a totally different seminar series on the side. Sometimes it will feel like you don't know anything about any of the different topics. Um, I've tried to get used to having this, this feeling. Um, and I think one of the things, if you're doing that kind of uh, stuff, if you're in that kind of position, is to learn to feel proud of your flexibility. And to remember that teaching more broadly is always going to enrich your research, whatever it's about. My final uh, piece of advice is to be bold. Um, so have confidence in your project and your reason for doing interdisciplinary work. So ultimately, you're much more likely to produce original work than those who are too scared to venture beyond their own disciplinary boundaries. Good luck.